we have started trying to count our seed, uh, which isn't that typically done uh, with um, small grains. It's typically done by bushels or, or pounds. But it, we do have uh, size differences in small grains, and we're trying to, we're trying to count seeds so we know exactly how many seeds we're putting per acre. When I started growing oats, when I first started farming, my grandfather was still alive, and, and we were using broadcast cedars at that time. And Grandpa always said he wanted seven oat kernels per handprint. So he always, he'd come out, we'd set the cedar, and then Grandpa would come out and put his hand down and count the kernels. And if we had seven, we, were, we could keep going. If we didn't, we'd open the cedar up a little. <laughs> Now that you've picked a small grain and picked a variety, it's time to start thinking about planning. One of the most important things to think about when getting started with small grains is how to determine a planting population and how to accurately plant that number of seeds. What kind of seeding rate do most farmers aim for with small grains? It turns out that the rate varies quite a bit and that may be detrimental to management decisions. David Weisberger, who's a graduate student at Iowa State University, talked with dozens of small grains growers around the state of Iowa over the last couple of years. And seeding rate was one thing his research has highlighted as an area of potential improvement for farmers. One of the main questions that we asked was over, you know, just one slide, I had this slide that said, okay, what's your population for corn planting? And then farmers would raise their hands and they'd chime in and say, you know, anywhere from 30 to 35,000. And then I asked the second question, which is, what's your population for soybeans? And again, farmers would raise their hands and they'd chime in. It'd be anywhere from, let's say, 175 to 225 or 250 plants per acre. So then we asked a third question, which they weren't expecting, is what's your population for a small grain? And besides one farmer out of the 41, no one was really aware or thought about seeding small grains from a population perspective. For a beginner, I guess the first thing is planting rate and uh, there's a lot of old stories about so many uh, oats in a horseshoe and and but it works out to about 30 seeds per square foot or about I think it's 1.3 million you have to do the math 1.3 million seeds per acre and I think that's the key thing to um, figure out how to set your drill uh, to, to, to as close to that 1.3 million as you can. So <clears throat> over the last two summers we've been able to do a couple or three different uh, experiments to look at management effects on oat grain yield and oat quality. Um, and there's some other things we'll look at in a second as well. So the first of those trials involved working in 2015 with farmers Doug Allard and Aaron Lehman and then in the summer of 2016 with Orchard Dial. So what we had them do was a little different than the average uh, two treatment trial that most PFI farmers are used to. It's not that different though. So what we looked at was three different treatments, right? And what those treatments were, were three different oat plant populations, all right? 22, 29, and 36 plants per square foot. So what this means is that the three of those farmers uh, calculated the, the seeds per pound of their oat variety. So they figured out 
how many seeds were actually in a given pound, right? And then we sent them a really simple little equation, and they calibrated their drills so that the output on that drill would hopefully seed 22, 29, or 36 plants per square foot. All right, so it was the population-based approach that we were talking about a little bit earlier. And what we found at the end of the season was that there was no significant difference between or among any of these three treatments. What did differ, however, was the seed costs. So what we found is that for much more expensive, you could have the same yield, or the other way of saying that is you could get the same yield with much less seed input. Okay, so the same yield, the same test weight. The other thing that we thought was really important to examine was would a low population have any effect on forage establishment or weed suppression? And we found that there was also no significant difference between or among the three treatments on legume or forage establishment and weed suppression. All right, so this was a pretty positive study where we found that you could decrease seed costs and maintain yield and test weight while still being able to suppress weeds and establish a legume or a forage. So that was pretty positive. While the Wilsons have moved more towards grain drill calibration to get a more precise seeding rate, even the number of oats per handprint that Dan's grandpa used was probably more accurate than thinking about seeding rates in pounds per acre, because it forced you to think about seeds instead of pounds per acre. It more or less forced you to calibrate the planting equipment, in that case a seeder but now a drill, and David says that that helps you make decisions more reliably. Regardless of the small grain that you're going to grow, I always think it's a good, day, a good idea to get a sense of the seeds per pound count and calibrate your drill. So let's say, let's call this, you know, this is bushel A and this is bushel B. All right. So seed size is not uniform from year to year and it's not uniform for variety to variety or even lot to lot. All right. So in 2015, for example, right. Let's say this is a bushel all full of grain, all right? If I took out a pound of that grain, right? In that pound, in one of our experiments, there were 17,000 seeds, okay? In 2016, again, I took out a pound, right? One pound. And in that pound, there were only 14,000 seeds, all right? So, from year to year, if I seeded bushel A and bushel B, I'd have a chance of having 17,000 seeds or 17,000 plants on the ground or 14,000, which is quite a big difference. So again, what we're get, trying to get growers to do, to do is to count 1,000 seeds and weigh that 1,000 seeds, and at least that gives you a decent proxy of your seeds per pound count. Okay. And then when you go to set your drill, you have a better idea of if I'm putting out, you know, X amount of pounds of seeds or X amount of pounds in general, I know this is how many seeds I'm getting and I have a better idea of how many plants I'm getting. And I think from a management standpoint, if you want to compare yield or management or fungicide or fertility from year to year, you want to compare apples to apples and not apples to oranges. So if I seeded bushel A in 2015, and seeded bushel B in 2016. How do I know that fertility is not affecting this differently than this? You don't really. What, again, what you want to do is have a, a decent idea of being able to make a fair comparison. And I think you can do that when you move towards calibrating a drill and getting a decent sense of seeds per pound count. <laughs> wouldn't go out and just go plant corn without making sure your planter is behaving properly. So we're going to do the same thing with the grain drill. To calibrate a grain drill, you need to know a few basic pieces of information. You'll need to know the number of seeds that are in a given pound of the grain that you'll be planting. And you'll need to decide on what planting population and seeding rate you'll be shooting for. Then you'll need to simulate the seeding of a given area to know whether your drill is seeding at the rate you want. Based on what you learn, you adjust your drill and try it again. Almost all drills have what I would call factory specs for seeding rates. 
that they're like more approximations or guesstimations is a good place to start. If you look over there, there's the, the chart on the uh, lid, and most drills have the charts on the lids if they haven't already gotten worn out. And that has multiple crops and all the different uh, rates that you could imagine, but those are for guesstimated seed sizes. And every seed lot is going to be different, just like in corn and soybeans. Uh, one batch of seed may be slightly different sized than the other, and that can really affect how this thing uh, drills because it basically is metering out a volume of seed, not a, doesn't have a seed counter that in individually counts like plate planter. So it's just grabbing wads of seed and dumping it out. And so since we're doing volume, we need to make sure that the volume that we're putting on has the number of seeds in it we need. We counted the seed out because this is my own rye that I grew last year. And so we don't have any information from uh, a seed company as far as seeds per pound to let us do our cal calculation and our calibration properly. So we counted out by hand uh, a thousand seeds, which actually worked out to be exactly an ounce, which is very lucky. Uh, it's not always how that works out, but uh, it's very, it's slow and it's tedious, but it's really important so that we get our calibration right for our planting population. So the first step, as Wade says, is to figure out the number of seeds in a pound. And to do that, you'll want to count out a thousand seeds. Less than that probably isn't enough, and more is probably not necessary. You'll weigh that, as Wade did, and you'll use that weight to figure out how many seeds are in a pound. We counted them all out by hand, and now that we know how many seeds we have per ounce, we then know how many seeds we have per pound and I can then calibrate my drill for the, uh, uh, the rate, the flow rate that comes out to make sure that we have the right amount coming out. Once you get your seeds per pound, you can pick a population. What should you shoot for? Well, it depends on the crop, variety, and timing. Vic shoots for about 1.3 million with oats. With several PFI farmers, David tested populations that ranged from 1 million to about 1.6 million plants per acre. But regardless of what you decide on, the most important thing is to keep good records and be able to adjust that rate in the future. To get at that desired plant stand, you need to also figure in stand loss and germination rate, and you can do that using the following formula. To get the seeding rate in pounds per acre, you need to take your target population and divide by the stand loss, and then divide that number by the number of seeds that germinate. So let's use Wade as an example. He got his winter rye in early, so he went for a lower target population because he knew it would have time to establish well and produce lots of tillers. This rate would probably be a little bit too low for oats, especially if you were getting them in late and he wanted somewhere around 800 to 900,000 plants per acre at harvest, and we'll figure his stand loss at 15%. Generally, 10 to 20% is a good estimate for that number, and his germination rate at 95%. So let's do the math. Using this formula, we come up with a seeding rate of a little over 1 million seeds per acre. Once we've picked a target population and seeding rate, we can find out the rate our drill is actually seeding. Because we know how many pounds are in a given volume of seed, we just need to simulate seeding a known area and then weigh the seed from that simulation. So the book tells us how to calibrate it uh, on, the, on the more exact uh, rate. And so what they recommend to do in this one, it says three units side by side and put seed, enough seed in those units to be able to run them properly and then collect the seed that comes out, weigh that, do it a couple times, and uh, then you'll have your calibration. So we're going to have our collection device, which is a handy dandy old seed bag with nothing in it. And we're going to put it underneath. And if I get it set right, it'll catch all three without making a mess. So that's there to catch the seed, 
Then we go around here and on all box drills are driven by something, usually a, a main drive wheel. This is a bigger machine, it's a 30 foot machine. And so this unit is driven by uh, drive wheels on the ends. And so what we have to do, since it's not a three point mounted unit, a three point mounted unit's easy because you just pick it up with a tractor and you can spin the wheel freehand. Uh, this one we have to jack it up because that's a carrying wheel. So it helps hold the planter up. So we have to jack up the wheels to get them so they spin freely. And then we'll go ahead and rotate as the path of travel. And the book recommends to do at least 20 revolutions and then check how much seed and scale it. So we're going to do 20. One, two, three. All right, 20. In order to find out the area that you're seeding, you need to know the circumference of the tire and the number of revolutions that tire makes in order to know the length. And based on those numbers, we can calculate the length that we seeded. To find the width, we need to know the row spacing. Wade's drill has 7.5 inch spacing. And we also need to know the number of tubes we disconnected to know the number of rows that we planted. In this case, Wade unhooked three tubes to catch seed from. So three 7.5 inch rows is more or less two feet. From there, it's simple. We multiply length by width to get the area in square feet and convert that to acres to know the area in acres that we seeded. Now we'll see what we've got in our bag here. Now, I had this originally set for the factory settings of a single bushel, an acre. My goal is to put on about one million seeds per acre. Now, since I'm using my own seed, I had to run it through a seed cleaner to make sure that I'm not reseeding a bunch of weeds or sticks or other things that would really screw up our calculations. All right, so that was 4.5, and now we gotta do a calculation. Wade's sample from the three tubes weighed 4.5 ounces, or about 0 0.28 pounds. And when we divide that by our area in acres, we get a rate of a little more than 39 pounds of seed per acre, which we know is a little over 600,000 seeds per acre. All right, so now we've got our rate. We found out we're running at 630,000, which is a little short. So we're going to increase, we've just increased the seed meters, uh, hopefully about a third to a third and a half, and we'll see how close we are. All right, so we'll start here and do our 20 again. Well, they certainly have more seed, which is good. Okay, and we now have 7.2 ounces instead of four and a half, so that's good. After adjusting the seed meters, Wade's sample was about 0 0.45 pounds, which meant his seeding rate was a little over 63 pounds per acre, or just about right on his target seeding rate of a million seeds per acre. Now, all he has to do is adjust the rest of the drill accordingly, and he's ready to plant. There. Tighten it up. Done. Real easy. The drill is all ready to go. You know your target population. Now what's next? Is your field ready to go, or do you need to work the ground for an optimal seed bed? What depth are you shooting for? And perhaps most importantly, when is it time to plant? We'll get to all that next week on the next episode of Rotationally Raised.